Hello and welcome to lecture 20 of Aerospace Propulsion. This is the second of two, uh, sorry, the second of three lectures in which we'll be reviewing off-design engine matching. Last time we looked at a single shaft turbojet's off-design behavior and today we're going to look at two shaft engines. So having multiple shafts, again, the reason to do this addresses two major problems. So on design, it really allows you to go to pressure ratios greater than about 20. And off design, it allows you to alleviate the movement of the working line towards the surge line for the compressors at low mass flows. So first we'll consider a two shaft turbojet engine. Um, the overall behavior is uh, similar to the simple turbojet, but we need to consider the off design operation of each compressor separately. Then we'll apply that same approach to a two shaft turbofan engine like the ones we designed for the new efficient aircraft uh, earlier in the course. The key takeaway messages from this lecture are that uh, the simple turbine behavior, basically that we have a choked flow with the turbine inlets and a constant efficiency, um, makes the treatment of a two shaft turbojet engine pretty straightforward. Um, particularly if the propulsive nozzle is also choked, then a direct prediction of off design performance uh, is possible and doesn't require any kind of iterative procedure. The low pressure shaft uh, has much larger excursions from design conditions in terms of mass flow variations than does the high pressure shaft in a two shaft engine. And two shaft high bypass ratio turbofans are a lot more complicated to model off design because the core propulsive nozzle is unchoked and the bypass ratio varies off design. In this case, in, for this type of engine, an iterative solution is always required. So again, we'll start with the two shaft turbojet. For this kind of engine, the turbines and the nozzle um, are, are basically choked. Right? Any condition of practical interest, the high pressure turbine inlet, the low pressure turbine inlet, and the propulsive nozzle outlet are all choked. And using the same approach that we developed for a single shaft turbojet, uh, this provides a, a, a straightforward solution approach. Basically, the shaft powers have to balance. Uh, so again, if we neglect the mass flow rate of fuel and neglect any sort of cooling or bleed flows, then the high pressure shaft and the first pressure shaft, um, right, remembering that we have different uh, CP values when we have combu exhaust combustion products versus uh, clean air, um, but it's very simple to raise these power balances. Uh, and the same other constraints apply in our two shaft engine too. So the sum of all the pressure rises must be equal to the sum of all the pressure drops. Um, the mass flow is constant and the propulsive nozzle we will consider to be isentropic. Um, if the turbines are choked as well as the nozzle, then M bar four, M bar four five, and M bar nine are all the same and they're equal to the choking value for gamma 1.3, which is 1.389. So through these assumptions, um, we ba basically get uh, our turbine and, and our temperature and pressure ratios for the, the turbines are simple functions of areas. So the high pressure turbine pressure and temperature ratios are fixed by the geometry of uh, a, the ratio of A4 to A45. And the low pressure turbine has exactly the same kind of behavior um, where the geometry area ratios control everything since the flow is choked both upstream and downstream of the alpha turbine. We can again write the turbine powers using coefficients like we did for our single shaft engine uh, last time. Um, right, the temperature ratio across each turbine is, is fixed. So the performance depends only on the inlet conditions. Um, and we can write that as uh, the, the power divided by the mass flow rate. Um, is, is equal to this sort of constant. We're going to have different constants, KHP and LP, for the high and low pressure shafts. Uh, and the definitions of, of the, the coefficients are given here. Looking at the shaft power balances, uh, then that lets us go ahead and get the compressor temperature rises for both the high pressure and low pressure compressors. So then we have to think about how to get the compressor pressure ratio. So we have the low pressure and high pressure turbine uh, pressure ratios and we can obtain these using the same approach that we used last time for the simple turbojet. So um, what I'd like you to do is take a minute here and actually go ahead and try to write out expressions 
for the pressure ratio of each compressor before you move on to the next part of the video. We'll also take this problem up in the tutorial.